Good evening, everyone. I trust that you are doing well and that you are coping with these lockdown conditions that we still find ourselves faced with. Tonight, uh, we're going to be looking at being renewed by the resurrection power of God's wisdom. Our reflection comes from the book of Proverbs, from chapter 3. So if you would like to get your Bible to maybe read through the whole chapter and to reflect on what it says about wisdom. I'm going to be looking at verses 13 through to verse 34. Proverbs 3 verse 13. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yield better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. By wisdom the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge the watery watery depths are divided, and the clouds let drop the dew. We'll read up to there for now. Seemingly the book of Proverbs in this passage calls us to seek wisdom. In Proverbs, wisdom is associated with God and is described as being present at creation. It is the source of life and a manifestation of God, much like the Gospel of John's Logos. These few verses of Proverbs then seek to describe wisdom as the most valuable and desirable thing we can seek. It is better than precious stones. It guides us down paths that not only lead us to joy and delight, but to justice and love. A way of being considerate. It offers us life and brings great satisfaction by way of fulfillment. It is a tree of life that should be clung to, just like Jesus said that he is the true vine. The writer of Proverbs goes on to describe the benefits that godly wisdom brings to the wise. I'm reading from verse 21. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding go out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you. An ornament of grace to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble when you lie down. You will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster, or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side. He will keep your foot from being snared. Wisdom brings life to those who embrace it. It guides you safely on your way, on your journey through life. Wisdom drives away fear and allows you to rest securely in the knowledge that the Lord will be by your side. What does godly wisdom in action look like? Again, the writer of Proverbs tells us. Verse 27. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you, when you already have it with you. Do not plot plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustily near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason, when they have done you no harm. Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. Wisdom is not just about knowing what the wise thing to do is, but it is about doing it. About putting your wisdom into action. It is about helping others when you have the ability to do so. Doing good when it is within your power. It is about not harming those who place their trust in you. Not lying or accusing somebody falsely. It is about not envying those who have what you don't, especially if they get them through deceitful means, and above all, not to follow their ways. 
Finally, we learn why it is best to act with godly wisdom. Verse 32. For the Lord deserts the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. The wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame. The wise are taken into the Lord's confidence. Imagine that. Imagine being taken into the confidence of the one who created everything. The one who is wisdom personified himself. The wise will be blessed by the Lord while the wicked bear his curse. Even if you are oppressed, the Lord, Lord's favor rests on the humble. The focus here is God's wisdom. But there is another type of wisdom that aren't very wise at all. There is a kind of wisdom that enables us to navigate systems and values of human society so that we win the game in human terms. But while this wisdom is prevalent in our world, it has not brought solutions to the big crisis of poverty, war, discrimination, classism and climate change. This is because human wisdom is limited tends to be individualistic, tribalistic, or nationalistic, and is driven by the desire for pleasure, power, exclusivity, and possessions. But the wisdom that the writer of Proverbs describes is very different from this. It is expressed in care for and service of others. It is rooted in the love of God and neighbor. It is rooted in justice, and it embraces the discipline of simplicity, service and sacrifice, the loneliness or humility that Jesus proclaimed. This is true wisdom, and it is indeed a tree of life, if you have the courage to embrace and cling to it. Can you cling to God's wisdom today? Let us pray. Almighty Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we seek your wisdom. Lord, especially in these difficult and dark times, we rely on you even more than we did before. We pray, Lord God, that we will follow your ways because your ways are wisdom. We pray, Lord God, that we will act justly. We pray, Father God, for your blessing on us as your people, that we don't act as the world acts, but we will act with godly wisdom in everything that we do. We pray, Father God, for our government, for our president, for all of those in power, Lord, that you will equip them with the type of wisdom that only you can bring. That the decisions they make, they make, Lord, won't be based on earthly wisdom, but on your heavenly wisdom. We pray, Father God, in our households that we will act wisely. That we will act wisely towards our family, towards our friends, towards those that we love the most. We pray, Father God, for wisdom in our work life, in our businesses. We pray, Lord God, that we will make wise decisions, especially at this time, especially when we're, not uncer we're so uncertain about what the future holds. We pray, Lord God, for your wisdom and for your guidance. Lord, we humble ourselves before you. And we pray, Father God, that as you said that you will Lift the humble, that you will lift us up so that we can be in your presence, that you will take us into your confidence so that we can act in a godly way. Lord, we thank you for your wonderful love, for your endless mercy, as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we would say the benediction together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.